Welcome back to the Just Fantasy Baseball Podcast, Episode 12. My name is Rami Lavi. That is Vince D'Amato. And today we are back together after a week hiatus where we each did, I guess you didn't do a solo episode. I did a solo episode. Uh, I had to talk to myself for 25 minutes. It wasn't that bad. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm used to it. It's called a shower for me. Uh, but yeah, today we are talking about relief pitchers, which is really fun. Uh, there's a lot of them. It's a deep position. It's a weird position, though, because it's so... The word I'm thinking of is like fickle, like it's not stable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it changes on a dime and guys get subbed out and sometimes guys get their job back and then they lose their jobs or get their jobs. And what we're looking for overall is saves. It doesn't hurt to have an extra stri a few strikeouts and help your whip and help your ERA. Uh, but really what you're looking for with this category is saves. And some leagues like our league is a saves and hold league. But today we are going to be talking about the best relievers. Uh, who are going to get you some of those saves. I think this is a great category for streaming because it's not a category people are drafting very high. There's a couple of guys that maybe people are drafting high, but let's talk about it from the beginning and let's start. First of all, hi, how are you? Good. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> just figured I'd go right into it. You wanted to get into your tiers uh, and I'm curious to see how you broke this down. So give me your tiers for relief pitchers. Yeah, so before I do bring up the tiers, I want to mention, so we are going to be talking, like this episode is based on only saves. So like a league that just does saves. I know some leagues do saves, holds. Other ones I've actually seen that I really like, they do saves and holds are half a point or something like that. So oh, that's cool. This is, yeah, <clears throat> this is for... Wait, are we leagues. a points league? No, no. We're not. Yeah, that's what I, I feel I like that's so. something you should know before you draft. But anyways... Uh, I, I, there were a lot of things I should have known before we drafted. Apparently. Um, and then I would, in, including, and fine, I'll talk about this now. I would have loved to have known about the Devin Williams injury, which I don't know. We'll talk about that. I'm sure. And I would have loved to have known about the Kevin Gosman injury. We drafted two weeks before the season and then decided, yeah, we're just not going to include the Sewell games. So if we're drafting before the Sewell games, what's the point of not including them that I didn't get either. Like my other league, we also drafted before the Sewell games. And I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly at all. I think it's pronounced more like I soul. soul. I think it's soul. soul. Yeah. Anyway, um, the the uh, my other league we drafted before those games, but the stats counted. So Freddie Freeman already zero for two. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> etc. See, now you wish they didn't count. No, but no, um, I, I'm, I'm loving it. The one other thing that it was I did bet on I Freddie Freeman to... to get a hit, and I didn't hit it. Uh, but I did my first nerfy of the year. I, it was beautiful. I mean, that fly ball that I that was a jump scare. The fly ball in the top of the first inning. I forget who hit it with two outs. Maybe. Uh, Cronenworth, the last uh, the last out of the top of the first inning. No, he would have been the bottom of the, the bottom, inning because yeah. he was on the Padres. So, uh, oh, it was um, Will Smith, mm. right? He was batting cleanup, runner on first, which also that was also funny. I was watching. Were you watching? Did you watch it first? Of I all, watched. I, I picked up right about the eighth the eighth inning when I woke Got up. Got it. So mm -hmm. I was on my way home from work. I worked an overnight, so I was on my way home from work and I was watching the game on the train, um, and I got a nice. Uh, so they had no idea Don Orsillo and Mud, who I love like the best broadcast team in baseball, one of. And they are the Padres broadcasters, and they had no idea uh, why Mookie Betts was sent back to first base. I don't know if you saw this. Mm -mm. So typical baseball. This is like so typical baseball in 2023. 3.09 Eastern time, or not Eastern, 3.09 Western time, but local time for the two teams playing. Uh, the first batter of the year reaches on a pitch clock violation. That's how that's how we started the season in 2024. Just going to tell you how this season is going to go. And then he proceeded to attempt to steal second base, stole it successfully, and then was called back. No one knew why. And then later we found out it was an umpire's interference. Hmm. So get out Did of the he, way, maybe. Was the, the home plate umpire interfered with the catcher? Or... I, maybe, maybe, hmm. I guess. That was a couple weird things. I also don't know. Did you see? Did you catch in the? Um, but why is that uh, like Mookie Betts' fault? Like I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and that was like the uh, you know it was kind of a weird situation too when Shohei uh, you know was caught trying to advance on the pop up. I don't know if you caught that. And then no, he, I didn't see that. He ran oh, past second, him. but then on his way back, he didn't touch. He was it. safe, but he didn't touch the base. And yeah, so but that happens a lot. Out. We've seen that before. Mm -hmm. There's also, I mean, a scary thing. There was a bomb threat against Shohei Otani. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about that? that was crazy. Yeah, it was late last night. I saw that. And um, speaking of, did you see Shohei's interpreter today? Oh, yo, my God. Yeah. Baseball's off to a flying It's kind of, yeah. The last 24 um, hours have been nuts with I, one game. I, That's it. I started texting my friend. My friend, he's an entertainer. 
um and he goes to a bunch of clubhouses to entertain um and as one does exactly uh i texted him i was like so here's who this was your your spring training visits you visited otani thief um you visited with trevor bauer at his like fantasy factory or whatever sex offender um and then he also went to the astros this week so cheaters so there you go he's got it he's got he's from the trifecta Yeah. yeah exactly um let me finish that text to him and it is sent uh that is his spring training tour this year anyway so yeah baseball off to a flying start but we're talking about relievers today yeah and before last thing i want to say about um injuries before i dive into the tier list is relievers have had probably the worst string of injuries compared to any other position of baseball, like the number of relievers that have gone down or at Think least about it. guys who are supposed to come like... in like three, four times a week and throw a hundred mm-hmm. miles an hour. That's what relief pitchers are in baseball now, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of talk around the league of like guys aren't supposed to throw that hard, right? Our, bo- our human bodies are not supposed to throw that hard. And, you know, yeah, they're only throwing a few innings, but you're absolutely right. A lot of them are throwing, you know, close to triple digits or they're just throwing very hard. Um, some of those and major injuries a week, right? Yeah. Some of those major injuries you mentioned right before we started, Devin Williams, he has two stress fractures in his back um, and it's going to be a possible return in June. Um, He's currently going to be taking six weeks off and then have a six week throwing program. So June is, is kind of the conservative. Yeah. yeah, um, So it could be July, maybe even longer. Um, Obviously. And we only have one one. injury spot. I'm sorry. And our our league league? two, one, two, we have two. Okay. Yep. I need to check that. All right. Um, and then Joanne Duran is another one who, again, top front line, top, you know, five, six closer uh, being drafted this year. And he's out with a moderate oblique strain, no timetable for his return. But I think the fact that it's called moderate is kind of scary. Um, they use right. that, that language. So um, not something that I'm really interested in drafting. Uh <laughs> The last, or not the last one. But you know what's what's interesting about those, before you bring up the last one, is look at the backups. Again, when we talk Mm -hmm. about streaming, find those guys, and then you could dump them halfway through the season or whatever. You know, that's good value right there. Yeah, and actually, as you say that, uh, I'm kind of sad that I didn't think of Griffin Jacks, who's another one who could steal saves in that Minnesota bullpen. He looks legit. Um, The the hard part is, though, you'll have to drop him when Durant comes back because... He's probably not going to fend off Durant, but Griffin Jacks is one to, to keep an eye on there. Um, another guy who's down is Jordan Romano. This one's a little bit scary. I just traded for him in a dynasty league. I traded away Spencer Jones, which kind of hurt, um, especially yeah. watching Spencer Jones take off. Good. But I needed saves. I needed saves. And um, now we see Jordan Romano is getting an MRI on his throwing elbow. So he's shut down for a few days. They're going to see what that looks like. No, anytime. It's I mean, we had elbow. that with we had that with Garrett Cole last week. Yeah. Did we even talk about that, or is that where we both no, off as was happening? Both yeah. Were gone. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, that whole situation was crazy as a Yankee fan, and obviously, I was working on WFAN when the news came out, the initial news, and I was freaking out. And then I was working when you know it kind of progressed, and then we found out what was actually happening. Ultimately, I think like. It was an overreaction because they just wanted to be sure. Um, but I think he should be back. Like, if I had to guess, I'm not a doctor, but I think he'll be back like mid season. At least two for you guys. It looks like Rodon has some kind he of was juice. Really he, good. A better. he was yeah. really good. And uh-huh. then Joe Torre came and pulled him from the game. Knock on wood. We don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> Lots here, of knocking but, on wood. Yeah. Um, and then another one, and one of the top guys, uh, David Bednar, he had a lat problem. He is throwing, though. Kenley Jansen also had a back problem. He's throwing. And then Matt Brash, who originally looked like I think he was going to be out for the year. He has an elbow problem, but he is also throwing. All of this just to say, relief pitchers, if you've been drafting relievers or if you've been drafting for the last couple months, you probably had one of these relievers and, you know, as you did, Rami, and now you're like, what the hell? What am I supposed to do for saves? Because a lot of these guys were drafted as an RP1. So yep. um, hopefully we can give you guys some information today on what to do. Um, and like Rami said, great, great piece of advice. Look at who's behind them, right? Look at some of those be- those pitchers behind and, you know, who do you think's next up? Who do you think's got the best stuff? So, And that's uh, good to look at always. Always find who you think would be because it's a type of position. If a guy's cold for a couple of games in a row, 
the guy behind him steps in. Steal, it's not a set in stone position anymore. We we're talking about this before we started recording. There, a lot of teams don't have, even like Clay Holmes with the Yankees, who is their closer. He would lose save opportunities here and there when he was cold. If someone else had the hot hit, like other guys are going to get save opportunities. And if they prove themselves or if the, the top guy gets hurt, which is happening all the time with relievers now, like we said, take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, couldn't have said it better myself. So I will run through the tiers now. So yep. tier one, I it hurt not to include him. I had it because I don't really know where else to throw him. Um, I do have Devin Williams in there. Um, yep. I also have Edwin Diaz, Josh Hader, Emmanuel Classe, and Camilo Duvall. That is the God tier. Those are top five uh, relief pitchers. Um, top four if you take out Devin Williams because you yep. kind of have to at this point. Um, so that is tier one. I got to um, ask you about uh, Diaz. Are you nervous about him coming off the injury? No, not really. No, if it was an elbow or a shoulder, yes. Right. But this is a leg, lower body injury. He already yeah, all, looked like he was year. ready to throw the end of the year last year. He's had a full, full year of recovery. And, and he's he looked good looks this spring. Good. Yeah, yeah, he looks good. Yeah, I and mean, I saw Josh Hader hasn't looked good in spring. Um, so, again, we value spring when we want to, and we just devalue it when we don't want to. It's just how we do it. We make up our own rules, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, Josh Hader's one that's I'm not too worried about, you know, I – there is Ryan Presley back there if you want to get some insurance, if you have Josh Hader, but I'm not too worried about him. I think he's going to be just fine. Um, moving on to the second tier, this is kind of the solid RP1, um, and I have Rysel Iglesias here, as well as Jordan Romano, David Bednar, and Alexis Diaz. Now, I could have potentially moved up Romano and Bednar if they weren't injured, um, but with those injuries kind of floating around, I'm certainly not comfortable taking them, you know, near Duvall or Class A. So I think this that does bump them down a little bit. Um, and Alexis Diaz, you know, you know how much I love my Reds guys, brother of Edwin Diaz. So um, could potentially return quite and a bit of value there. Potential trade piece, I think. You know, if if a team's doing really well, the Reds are out of it. He's the type of guy that could get moved to a good team, I think. I know he's young, but still with relievers. Those are also the guys you have to keep an eye on as the season goes on. We talk about the guys who can get traded into a better role, but maybe less saves versus the guy sitting behind the guys who can get traded. Right. Yeah. And Bednar was a guy that we were kind of thinking for the last few years might get traded. Um, he hasn't. So I think, you know, I don't see why the pirates would, would move him now and the reds, you know, as for as much as we've talked about how good they are, it looks like a third of their starting lineup now is going to start the year, you know, either, on PED suspension or on the injured list. So they, they've taken a couple hits. So, um, you know, they're, they're going to have quite a bit, quite a ways to bounce back. Major League Baseball with the positive PR hits, just one after the other. <laughs> um, next, so tier three, I label this is the low end RP1, high end RP2 territory. Um, you feel good if one of these guys is your, you know, your RP1, but I'd like to double tap here and end up with two of these guys or um, something like that. And so, in this tier, I have Paul Seawald, Andres Munoz, uh, Pete Fairbanks, Evan Phillips, Ryan Housley, Tanner Scott, Clay Holmes, Craig Kimbrell, and Adbert Alzelay. Um, quite I'm a bunch a proud of proud owner, by the way, of Paul Seawald. Thank you. Good, good big yep. choice. Yep. Um, Paul Seawald's been phenomenal for the last three years. Can't, yeah, can't I, hate I, him I, I think he's a good underrated guy. You know, I don't know. Yeah, and so his ADP right now is 101. So you are paying a little bit. I mean, that's you know certainly a, a, a pretty high pick. Yeah, uh, but I think he's in on our a good draft team he went and... later than that, right? Probably. Well, yeah, our draft yeah, doing cause... saves and holds. Exactly. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and we will talk about some of those names. I have one of those names on my best value uh, of the day. So stay tuned for that. Um, tier. F- Sorry, do you want to mention anything else there? No, I, I'm going to stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, tier four, I have definite RP2. And so, yeah, I definitely do a little bit of a deeper dive with RPs because there's just so many names of guys who are going to have an impact. So um, tier two, a definite RP2 territory. Um, Kenley Jansen, Jose Alvarado, Alex Lang, and Jose Leclerc. Um, tier five, I have as RP3 territory. And this is where I put Mason Miller. A lot of people have been loving Mason Miller. Um, I also have Carlos Estevez. Estevez, Estevez, uh, Kyle Finnegan, 
your guy, Yanier Cano, Jason Adam, Will Smith, James MacArthur, and Matt Brash to close it out. So I love Kyle Finnegan. I actually do like teams. We talked about this earlier. Teams that are low scoring, teams that are going to be in a lot of close games. It's almost better than a great team. Like the Dodgers, mm-hmm. like how valuable is their closer? Of course, they're going to win some close games too. But the Dodgers might just smash everyone, right? And score a million runs. And you're not, you're not going to get as many save opportunities. Whereas we talked about like the Arizona Diamondbacks and Seawald, right? Like he'll have a bunch of save opportunities, right? There's uh, there's data on that actually. And I, I don't have it in front of me, but I've heard many times that the teams that are between 85 and 90 wins, that's where you tend to get most of your saves because you're absolutely right. If a team's too good, they're going to blow out. You know, look at Trevor Hoffman's career, you know, (laughs) he was versus Mariano Rivera, who ultimately it took him longer to get to that save number. You know what I mean? Because he was on a great Yankee team that won a lot of big games. Right. Like, and if you look at some of them from last year, you know, uh, Camilo Duvall, right. He, I think, led the league in saves. I don't remember if he was first or second, but him and class A, like. The Guardians and the ball. Giants are not yep. the Braves and the Dodgers, but they continue to lead. So, well, specifically the Guardians who struggle to score runs, you yeah. know, typically. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something to definitely keep an eye on um, as we, you know, as we get through, uh, go throughout the season. So, do you want to start with your best value? I've been talking for a little bit. Do you want to start with your best value and go from there? So, I don't know. I mean, my best value, like I said, I have, you know, my guy who I love is Kyle Finnegan. Um, We'll go right there because uh, to me, he is on a team that is not going to score a ton of runs and will be in close games. And this is the thing about baseball. Even if you're one of the worst teams in the league, you could win 60 to 70 games. And that means your closer will get 30 to 40 save opportunities. So Kyle Finnegan for late, late, late in the draft. He's a sleeper. Um, I like him as my my best value. Yeah, and the one thing I mentioned right before we started that I just want people, if they are listening yep. and you do want to go get some Kyle Finnegan, I also mentioned take a look at Hunter Harvey. I think there's a good chance Hunter Harvey ends up with that, Steals, that yeah. closing closing role, but could very well be Finnegan. But I think Harvey's the better pitcher from at least the the little bit that I looked at uh, right before this. So um, definitely consider, consider him. Um, my best value I threw in as Adbert Alzaloy. Pick 150. Not too expensive, especially considering how high some of these other relievers are going. You know, you have um, Edwin Diaz going at pick 49. Yep. I mean, obviously, he's elite of the elite. But 100 picks later, give me a guy who, like we just talked about, probably on an 85 to 90 win team. And he has the role. Like, I don't think Hector Neris is going to steal any saves from him. I don't think Julian Merriweather is going to steal any saves from him. So, um, you know, I I think Adbert Alzale, I pick 150. You know, we saw him took o- take over the job last June, and I don't know if you remember that run, but there was a run where he was leading the league in saves from that point on, and it was a long, extended run. He I know you phenomenal. remember that run, right? <laughs> Who doesn't in Chicago? Like, it yeah, was... exactly. He's kind of like our guy now. He's our closer. It's like, you know, the Mets with Edwin. Like, we feel that for the yeah. first time in a long time having a closer. I haven't so. had that since Mariano Rivera. I'm not even going to lie, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully and, the, and so many teams don't have that and that's what we're talking about it's such a weird position where that's like it feels like there is no certainty in this position and i think part of the reason why alzloy's uh, price is down a little bit is he missed some time towards the end of the year he had a forearm strain which ooh, scary frightening definitely but <laughs> he did make another start at the end of the year and he had the same velo um so i'm not too worried about it he had pretty decent strikeout numbers i think those can take a step forward um and the thing that's going to, I get, I really think, push him up is he has a phenomenal whip. Um, he doesn't walk a lot of guys, and he's in that third tier. Definitely potential to move up to the second tier. All right, who is your sleeper? Or sorry, I skipped worst value. Yeah. Who's your worst value? Doing? Worst guys. Guys. My bad. Come on. My bad. So this one is a little bit. This I actually think this one was was very tough for me to do worst value because. Um, especially with all these guys getting hurt now so many of these relievers yeah are my worst up I mean, up. my worst and, value is devin williams you're welcome <laughs> like, i mean and it's sorry. like you know devin williams is probably going you know picks between picks 200 and 400 right now at this point so um worst value is tough for me but i did go with alex lang um with of the detroit tigers and he is currently going at pick 213 uh in nfbc and i i i hesitate to bring this up because you know 
pitchers tend to be a little more erratic, but he had a nearly 16% walk rate last year, um, which is kind of strange because he balanced it with a nearly 40% whiff rate, which 40% whiff rate is like tops of the league. Like that's stupid, ridiculous. That's insane. So um, he clearly has the stuff, but the one big concern is his fastball is not a good pitch. Um, he had a 422 X Woba on his fastball last year, which is not going to get the job done, but he does have a plus slider and changeup that gets great whiffs on. And it kind of feels like it's his job to lose. So at 213, people are like, okay, well, it's his job. The Tigers are going to be good, better at least. Um, but I'm not so confident because here's one of the things I think the Tigers could be one of those teams that do trade for a reliever at some point yep. in this year because especially with the way they're starting pitching has really come together. Jack Flaherty looks really good this spring. Casey yep. Myers has looked phenomenal. Um, we obviously know Tariq Skubo. Like there's a lot and of And we know names. how much we know how much we put into spring. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, again, it, it's just a start. No, we go I back know. and so, forth. Yeah. Um, my point being, I wouldn't be surprised if the Tigers are really looking to compete this year. I, I don't think that they can do it and be serious if Alex Lang is their closer. Um, Jason Foley is also in the mix. So I could see them adding at the deadline. And I just don't think he's a very good pitcher. Like, I he's he's a great he's got great stuff. I don't know if he's got the control to really you know stick unless he makes some improvements. So I am not picking Alex Lang at two thirteen. My um just before we move on to uh, the sleepers, which I fall started earlier. But did you read my uh my description that i wrote for my episode that was the hardest part of doing a solo episode was i had to write the description did you read it no no was it was oh man i need to find it yeah i i I don't know i thought it was awesome (laughs) but i don't even remember what i wrote all right we'll find it at some point at some point just take a look at that read it let me know what you think yeah Uh, sure we'll we'll bring it up on the next episode it's kind of funny yeah exactly it helped me out with that all right sleepers i have two of them um i have one is his adp is 131 which is not like super high not super low not super high but it is clay holmes uh i think ultimately he's not very good i'll be honest i think he's not a great closer but he's gonna get the opportunities and especially with michael king not there anymore who else who else are they going to they just have to keep going back to him and yankees are gonna play in close games they don't have the pitching to to help them blow teams out so even if you think their offense is really good and by the way, how concerned Aaron Judge back in the lineup tonight? How concerned are you about Judge's health? I mean, I'm always concerned about Judge's health. Exactly. He's one that that's my point. it doesn't ever feel like he's going to play, you know, 100 games. If you do, that's kind of a good season, right? So I, I saw you kind of had some, you know, argument with some of your I guys. I went back like, and forth yeah, with someone yeah. on Twitter, yeah. And I think you were absolutely right. You know, I they were like trying to not. crossed over from seven fluke injuries to now, okay, now you're injury prone. Like, I get it. Diving and cracking a rib fluke hitting your toe on the bottom of the wall fluke getting hit by a pitch i remember where i was when i was watching that i was on my way i was eating dinner before a broadway show and i was going to go to that yankee game instead went to a broadway show it was a family decision not my decision (laughs) um yeah i had i was i literally had my thumb on like okay let's go to legends instead of like dinner and a show i was like well for the same price for dinner and the show we could sit in legends get all you can eat yankee stand whatever fine um because it's against the Royals. Who's who's going to watch the Yankees play the Royals like in June? Oh, and I then love the Royals here. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but they don't in New York. I don't know what to tell you. Of all the Yankee games, that was the cheapest one. And he gets hit on the hand in the first inning, first at bat. And then that was like his first big injury, right? That was 2018. So, you know, all those three injuries you could look at and be like, ah, eh, okay. But then you you look at the guy, he's had two healthy seasons, and now he's having unknown abdominal pain. And like, I don't want to speculate too much. Like, is there something seriously wrong with his health? That's not baseball related, which like is like a scary thing to think about because the x-rays and the MRIs show nothing. Like, it's just a scary thing that like, this is not an injury that you, it's so much better almost when you have an, a clear answer and you can pinpoint the injury and you know how to deal with it. But when it's something that's just kind of out there and could be lingering, like he already said, his toes can be lingering his whole career. Yeah. that he crossed over into injury prone for me and i i felt that way about mitch hanniger for a long time i tried to hold on to mitch hanniger's not injury prone because he put up some phenomenal numbers but then yeah. i don't know if you remember some of his injuries but like one time he ruptured a testicle and then i think like a year later two years later, he ruptured another testicle and i was like dude come on like 
how does that even happen? Injuries. Yeah, I, I don't want to know. I really don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to find out about that. Um, wow. But like there were just some weird things that happened. And then it's like, OK, after a while, you're like, yeah, you, you do get injured, even if it's kind of weird. Sure. And Judge is not on the right side of 30. Like these things are not going to get better. And I know, you know, 31, we see a lot of guys play into their 30s, especially hitters like Judge. I don't think his career is over by any means or, you know, I don't think he's trending that way. He I mean, every time he's healthy, numbers. he is the best player in baseball. Yeah. It's just the health. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So, um, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. How, it doesn't say how it happens. <laughs> what the, Oh my God. All right. to find Mitch Hanniger. Yeah. No, I'm not looking at Mitch. Hanniger. That's fine. Whatever. Okay. I remember, um, the first guy that I remember who, uh, Adrian Beltre one time took a took a ground ball. This was like years ago. Uh to his nuts. And then he uh he was out for a while. He and he said he like admitted he didn't wear a cup. And I was like, you play third base, dude. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Um all right. My other sleeper. Let's let's move on. Yeah. Uh I like Fairbanks from Tampa for mm-hmm. this simple reason that. He almost is going to, we know he's going to open some games. He almost is like this swing guy, but I do think he'll get enough saves also. Um, I'm not sure what his ADP is, but he's also a guy who's going to get a, like, again, not traditional closer. Tampa definitely doesn't use a traditional closer, and that's why he you do get him lower in drafts. But he's going to put up strikeouts, have good whip, probably get a lot more innings. So if you want to just steal, I don't know, seven innings a week and like, he could literally pitch seven, end up pitching seven innings. We can have 11 strikeouts in those seven innings. And if you throw a save or two in there, he could be a really valuable pitcher, not in the traditional sense that you'd think of as a closer or a relief pitcher. And especially in our league where holds count too, yeah, I'd take him and you could steal some wins that way. Also, if he's coming in the middle of a game or even, you know, as an opener, he probably won't get a win. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, that's where I'm thinking. Yeah, Fairbanks certainly has, there's no doubt about it, he has what it takes to be the best closer in the game, and I don't say that lightly. I think he certainly could yeah. be in that guy. It's just tier. how they use him, that's weird. Well, that it, and it could be valuable. That and he's had quite a few injury problems. Like last year, um, he missed some time with a forearm and a hip, and he's just he's never been healthy enough to you know, uh, trust with a full-time job like that. So all reason why he's a sleeper, baby, you mm-hmm. get him well, late in drafts. Where do you think he's going? I, don't, I have no idea. What yeah, going? that's the problem. He's going 113. Oh, he's going higher than Clay Holmes. Yeah. And that's that the point is like, off. but that's, he, okay. he's got, he's got the stuff. He he absolutely does. He's got filthy strikeout stuff. Whoever's so. picking him at 113 is an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad because again, especially now with how Wait, how could it Shane really Baz for 246 at his ADP? I wanted him so bad in the draft, and I forget who I went right before him. And I was like, oh, he'll be back on the turn. And he wasn't. I love Shane Baz. That this may year. have been me, actually. No, you didn't take him. No, I took it. It was the guy who thing. picked last. I know it was the guy who picked 12th because he kept stealing oh, my pick. I kept yeah, that's I kept why. going, I'll yeah. pick, and then he'll have his two idiotic picks, whatever the hell they will be. They're not going to be good for sure. And I'll get whoever I want coming back. And then every time he took one of the two guys, I'm like, you should oh, learn your lesson. Here? He's a smart guy. I know. He's and it took me the guy. entire draft. And he, mm-hmm. this guy, like every time, I was like, there's no way this idiot's going to take who I want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> hey, so yeah. smart guy, Quentin. You are yeah, a wise he one. He is I a smart still guy. hate you with the Freddie Freeman thing, but hey. Um, not his fault. Not but his fault. Definitely your fault. Not his fault. I'll I'll take the blame, even though I think it's user error. But anyways, I'll do my sleepers now. Yeah, um, please. My sleepers. So my first one kind of feels a little bit of um, I'm not even sure if I fully buy into it, but I am going to say Jose Leclerc because I think Leclerc has what it takes to kind of lock down that role in Texas. Um, the Rangers did add David Robertson, so that does kind of scare me. I think it's a pretty much 50 50, but um, I, I think he's got what it takes and I, I think being on the team last year and they won a world series with him as their closer, if they you will, did. I know that, um, there's a lot of, you know, kind of back and forth, but Jose Leclerc was their closer. They won a world series. So clearly he's good enough. And the big thing, the reason why I think he's a sleeper is his price. He's going at 221 right now, which give me way better know, than Fairbanks. Yeah. And give me, you know, he may be 50, 50 with David Robertson, but give me the guy who just won a world series as a closer for a phenomenal team at two twenty one. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking that price. He David does Robertson at control, 55 but... years old is somehow going to snatch that job right up. You know, that that's just what he does. He just comes in and snatches closer jobs every year. It feels like 
David Robertson. We're in June, and David Robertson is getting saves again. Yeah, so he is my first one, Jose Leclerc. Um, and then my second one is a little bit of a deeper one, but yeah, I, I see did the go lead with, singer from Coldplay. I did go with Chris Martin. Good, good reference there. Thank you. Um, I did go with Chris Martin. He's going at pick five ninety five, and the reason why I did this is not so much because I think Chris Martin is a stud, and I do think he's a good player. He had a one hundred five ERA last year and fifty one innings pitch, which is phenomenal. Um, but the reason why I picked him is because I think it's fairly likely that either him or Jansen or both um, get traded. And if Jansen gets traded, Jansen is going to step in and be another team's closer, maybe Detroit or something like that, right? We don't know. But, um, excuse me, it's very likely that one of the two get traded. And if it is Jansen, Chris Martin will step in and uh, claim Jansen's that, another that guy role. that I don't love as at his ADP at 152. If we're talking about like, eh, don't love that. Um, yeah, especially too. He was another guy who dealt with some injuries. Good. This, yeah. This and, and like, did you see the video? This was such a funny video that was going around, like people interviewing people outside um, Fenway Park. Like, are you excited for this baseball season? Like, when do they start? <laughs> you know what I mean? And this is Fenway Park, like in Boston. Like, like Red Sox fans are totally out on this team and I don't blame them. Um, yeah. Have you ever been to a Coldplay concert? Never been to a Coldplay, Coldplay concert. Actually. Dude, that I'm is not. one of the best concerts. I, I may have. My friend I actually remember. went to, I remember I had a friend who went at Soldier Field because I saw them, they, yeah. they do football stadiums usually, they sell yeah. out. So I think my friend, and I went last summer, two summers ago maybe at this point, it was two summers ago in uh, D.C. where the where the, uh, where the the formerly Redskins play and now the Washington Commander football team. And they they are awesome. One of the best concerts you'll ever experience mm. live. I like I'm not like I like Coldplay. Like they're not like oh I'm not turning them on on my regular rotation on my phone. But when I went to that live concert, this was I mean mind boggling, like crazy, yeah. crazy good. Yeah, there are some like, they some put on a great show, put up good shows, and it's just it kind of changes how you yeah it changes how I, you feel about them. them. So Chris mm-hmm. Martin, one of those guys, yeah, um, and now he's pitching for the Red Sox. Unbelievable! <laughs> what a what a career that guy. Yeah, had. this guy is crazy, and he's also a time traveler apparently because I don't think the Chris Martin on the Red Sox was alive when Chris Martin, the singer, started his uh, career. So we could look that up. Um, how old? <laughs> what year? How old is Chris Martin on the Red Sox? That's actually great. Uh, I had him up. I don't remember his exact age. Let me see. Chris Martin, Red Sox, thirty-seven. Oh, whoa, he's old as mm-hmm. shit. yeah, he's old as shit. Um, all right, yeah, June second, nineteen eighty-six. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize he was that fucking old. Um, all right, good for him. He's been around, so he beat Chris Martin Coldplay. Like he was probably like in high school when they came out. He's probably rocking out to that. Um, all right, now sponsored by Coldplay, Vinny's Prospect Report. So I'll keep this one brief because, I, again, like Rami and I have been talking about, there's so many opportunities for guys. This position to come is all over. And it's, but this is a position we're going. This could be a swing position that we're going to hit on throughout the season. Like when we're doing our waivers every Sunday, this could be yeah. one of the like, like it's crazy. That's how it position. works. The biggest mm-hmm. position we talk about is probably going to be relief pitcher. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So the first one I'll start with um, ADP of 405 is James MacArthur. He is in the Kansas City Royals bullpen. And the reason why I like Royals. MacArthur, we love the Royals here. As long as they're the not throwing at the Yankees. And, you know, they, they did what everyone else wanted to do by taking Aaron Judge out. Um, I like James MacArthur because I think the relief job for the Royals is wide open. Um, there is Will Smith who's back there who could take some saves away. But Fangraphs currently shows James as being the uh, front runner, James MacArthur, um, for the saves. So the reason why, again, another reason why I like him too is he had a 4.63 ERA last year. So I think that's keeping his price down. Um, he didn't have too many innings. He only had 25 innings. So that's why he's still technically considered a minor. Um, but a 4.63 ERA versus a 2.95 X ERA. So I don't think X ERA is always the best indicator. But in this case, you know, considering it's almost two full runs lower. Um, and a lot of his other underlying stuff looked really good. He had a 25% strikeout rate, just 2% walk rate in 25 innings last year. So he clearly was ready for it. Um, and I, I would see him, I definitely see him getting some saves and um, pitching closer to that 295 ERA uh, from last year. Um, and he even grabbed four saves last year. So as this Royals team gets better, I could see him kind of carving out some time. 
Um, he wasn't a traditional closer in the minors. So that is something to keep in mind too. If they maybe, you know, need some arms to spot start, maybe that's his job instead. But for now, I think he's one of the better pitchers in that bullpen. I'm not saying he'll take it forever, but I think for at least this year, um, he's definitely going to, uh, going to rack up some saves in that bullpen. So that's the first one is James MacArthur. Yep. And then my second one has been the talk of the town among a lot of, uh, especially dynasty uh, tables, but um, a lot of, you know, just fantasy baseball circles this year, um, this off season. And that is Orion Kirkering uh, with the Philadelphia Phillies. So his ADP is currently at 503. And what's not to love, the guy's got pretty much excellent stuff. The, the hard part, though, is there's just so many guys in front of him, like Jose Alvarado is going to get some time. And, um, you know, the Phillies are a legit team. So, you know, they're, they're not going to want to just throw out anyone. But I don't think Orion is just anyone. He had a 151 ERA last year in 53 I would never pronounce that name that way, by the way. How would you pronounce it? No, I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's got like elite stuff for a lever. He really does. He doesn't have any major control issues, which is huge. And he throws a 97, uh, almost 98 mile an hour sinker. He's got a great sweeper as well. Um, so Orion Kirkering is one that I think, you know, if if you've been following a lot of fantasy stuff this offseason, he's the name that's probably popped up, especially recently. But um, if you haven't heard of him, I think he's one that you definitely need to consider, especially late in drafts or even just on the waivers, um, because if Alvarado slips, there's a chance this guy's better than Alvarado. Right. And so if the Phillies want to compete they may, you know, have a timeshare or Alvarado comes down with an injury. Hey, look, at I that. see now them I ultimately have... bringing someone in. I mean, when I look at the Phillies, don't you think there's going to be a trade there? Ultimately, like Alvarado is not going to be their closer come October if they're there. Right. I don't see why not. Do you do you not like Jose Alvarado? I don't mind. No, I think Alvarado. he's fine. I just don't think he's the, you know, for a team that has still, I think, World Series aspirations. I don't think he's that top flight guy. Yeah, I, I do. I, you know, just looking at his, some of his stuff, 37% strikeout rate last year, 10% walk rate in 41 innings. That's pretty, pretty phenomenal stuff. Um, something against lefty closers. I don't know what it is that they're better and lefties are rule the world. Um, so no, it's just like, I feel like, lefty. I guess Josh Hader's really good, but like, I just feel like, no, you should be like the setup guy who's a lefty special. So that doesn't even exist anymore. Cause you have to face three batters, whatever. Um, yeah, and that's a, that's a good point, right? Maybe as a lefty, right. They're not going to want to throw them against three righties or something. You know, there's, there's potential there so there's for that to be had there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if Gaves Alvarado, does take a step down i could see kirk i mean at 503 for the potential to have the closer for the philadelphia phillies i think that's a great price before you give me your top 10 relievers going into 2024 mm -hmm. do you have anything on the ncaa tournament starting tomorrow or i guess as you're listening to this today wait is that you... starting right now you don't know anything about college I have basketball. Fill, I have to fill out my bracket. I, I told <laughs> yeah, you got to go fill out your bracket, dude. Yeah, everyone felt this is is it last too late? Fan. Can I not fill it out? No, you could fill it out still. Okay, still tonight okay. you could fill out brackets. I have to. Oh fan. yeah, I see Seton Hall, Saint Joe. Is this the play-in? Um, no, or Seton no? Hall is in the the NIT. Oh, and Loyola. Okay, okay. I was like, yeah, that's the, the NIT. Okay. Yeah, that scared me. Yeah, I gotta do. Okay, yeah. I gotta do that tonight definitely okay um thanks for reminding me yeah so my pleasure uh so your, you got nothing prediction? i got nothing no I, uh shoot i'll uh, let me pull it up i i don't know college ball and the craziest part so i'm hosting again on wfan right after the first games and like that's when everyone's gonna be super hyped about yeah. it i'm not gonna talk about it at all probably <laughs> um uh we could at least talk about some of the bracket you know how many brackets are busted or blah, blah, yeah blah, no blah, i have some that. takes that i'm gonna throw out there for sure for sure um but i'm not like i'm not the guy who's gonna be break you know i can't I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you and that's part of my thing like how am i gonna tell you that like oh this team is really good this other team's not as good it's like it's ridiculous it's like people are like all of a sudden they show up beginning like before um like five like right now and all of a sudden they're college basketball experts and they're putting a ton of money on it it just to me that's crazy that's first of all and then my other take is that um upsets suck like they're good in the moment but it's such like a fleeting thing it's such a like 
it's it's instant gratification is what it is because well, and- in the moment they're fun and then the next round the like the 14 seed has to face fucking Yukon and gets kicked to the shit out of them you know what i mean like eventually you know a team last night uh last night it was virginia made it in and everyone's pissed seton hall's pissed st john's is pissed the whole big east is pissed that they put virginia in the tournament over them virginia scored 14 whole buckets the whole game they, they put the ball in the hoop, the 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 object of the game over the course of forty minutes of game time, fourteen times. Who'd they play? I don't even remember. See, yeah. I told you I don't That's know. Tough. anything. I'm yeah. gonna go with like the relatively local though. Let's go UConn. Uh, they're the best team in the country, back to back champions. All right. Um, I did want to mention too before I give the top ten. I do want Please. to do a quick shout out. I don't know if you. I know you do. Um, a little bit with the YouTube stuff, but have you been following um, our YouTube at all? Yeah, of course. We have finally hit over 500 subscribers. Did so we really? That's yeah. We are at 505. I, as I right uploaded now. a few videos, I uploaded all the outfield videos this week, um, so that should be up there now. I'm still trying to find catcher. I lost it somewhere in my files. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, so it should be in the archives on Streamyard, which we use, or. Cause I don't, cause I'm looking and we didn't do it on zoom. We did two episodes on zoom. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I think so. So um, it should be on Streamyard. So it should be in the Streamyard file. So we could just redownload it again, but we'll have to find it in uh, past recordings. Um, should be easy to find. What episode was it? Episode seven or eight, like, and then just work backwards from there. Um, cause I'm like, we, I'm I swear to God, we did a catcher episode. I remember talking about Cal Riley, like Cal yeah, Riley, like the big we hundred percent yeah. did a catcher episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and for some reason, I didn't ever put up the YouTube videos. And I was like, all right, whoops, my bad. <laughs> um, so all the outfield videos are up. These videos, Relief, if you're watching this, are going to be up. And uh, so keep following along. I think it's the perfect time. Get involved now because we are going to be assisting you throughout the season. Next week, we have a couple of really cool things coming. And then also, we're going to have these bonus videos where we talk to some of the article writers for Just Baseball um, that, you know, just bonus videos i don't know if you saw ryan did a video a bonus video this week with one of the one of those articles so just these short quick hitters that are in between our episodes uh kind of bonus content on top of our episodes which is really cool and two episodes i think are going to be really fun we're going to break down our draft um from our sandlot league and then we are also going to do a best ball draft that's what's going to be happening on the podcast next week uh so both episodes will be out again monday morning and thursday morning before the start of the season thursday afternoon um so that'll be super cool uh, for you guys to listen to. And then once we're in season, we're going to hit it right away with the waiver wire stuff and top trades and different things like that. So it's going to be it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. Um, all right. Top 10. Yeah. So my top 10 relievers, and this is including all the injuries. It's kind of a tough position to rank right now. Um, but number one, Edwin Diaz. Number two, Josh Hader. Number three, Camilo Duvall. Number four, Emmanuel Classe. Number five, Raisel Iglesias. Number six, Alexis Diaz. Number seven, I do still have Jordan Romano. We'll see how, how his MRI goes. Number eight, David Bednar. Number nine, Andres Munoz. And number 10, Paul Seawald. So again, Romano Sleeper. and Bednar. Great value. Um, Paul Seawald, you know, baby. Yeah, Paul Seawald, good value there. And Romano and Bednar could fall off a cliff or... You know, I think it's good news that that Bednar is throwing at least so he could. Even I'm with up. you on Diaz. I think the Mets are going to be freaking awesome this year. I think they're a 90 win team. I don't know. I feel it in my bones. Mm-hmm. I feel it in my blood. Uh, I'm not a Mets fan. <laughs> yeah, are you going to get in trouble for saying that as a Yankees? Not a Mets fan. Yankees guy. I mean, I just it's so funny because I'm emotional about the Yankees, so I can't see it straight. You know, like I do think I like I do think the Yankees are also a 90 win team, but I think they're not a championship caliber team like. But with the Mets, I'm like, yeah, they're a 91 team. Can they win a championship if a couple guys get hot? Sure. The Yankees also could win a championship if a couple guys get hot. Yeah. Um, but I think Edwin Diaz like changes the whole dynamic of that team. First of all, it's just the energy. And then second of all, it shortens every game. Like that that makes a big difference. You have a lockdown guy. He is as locked down as they come. That's why you have him at number one. Haters had a tough spring, but he should be fine. They'll get a ton of opportunities up in Houston or down in Houston or out in Houston, wherever. Uh, wherever Houston is. <laughs> I know where it is. I just don't know how I would refer to it. I mean, I guess it's out and down. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, that should do it for us. The perfect place to end. Um, and uh, yeah, if you got anything else, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you on Sunday to recap our draft.